Okay. Thank you guys. Um, today I'm going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart and that is home value. And I want to talk about the things that, there. there's some things that increase the home value and there's some things that, that decrease home value. And the most important one is location. We've all heard this, location, location, location. And I've got some what we call hyper-local numbers for you today. These are areas of the city and the average price per square foot in those different locations. And I know y'all, we're all sprinkled around and we live in several different um, locations. Let's see, there's Arlington. These are average prices per square foot for the whole area. And that means that within that area, of course, there's going to be high and low and depend on some of these other variables. But Arlington is $89 a square foot. Bartlett is $58 a square foot. Collierville is the highest, which is a surprise, at $94 a square foot. Cordova, $50 a square foot. Downtown is the second highest at $98 a square foot. East Memphis, $74 a square foot. Frazier, this is a shocking figure, $13 a square foot. Germantown, $83. Lakeland is $84. And Millington is $51 a square foot. What do y'all think? Arlington seems extremely high. Arlington, because the lo something that's happened in Memphis in the past two years is the school situation. Now we have municipalities that have their own schools. That would be Bartlett, which Bartlett has come up, Carville, um, Arlington, Lakeland, Germantown. Germantown. Yeah. So that's really made a difference in the property values in those neighborhoods. A whole lot of difference. Um, and within the areas, like I know East Memphis is an average of 74. Can anybody think of an area in East Memphis that's an older neighborhood, smaller homes? High Point. Long yeah. High Point. High Point goes up to, even if you're not totally maxed out on details, High Point can go up to like $135 a square foot. Mm -hmm. so, and that's a big, so, and there's some of that within each of these neighborhoods. That's a particularly kind of uh, interesting one. Some other things. And this, this information comes into play, it's real important to me when I'm looking at a house with somebody and they're like, how much should I pay? And also what the potential is within that house, even if the house maybe isn't in wonderful condition, some of these factors you can change in a house, some of these factors you really can't change in a house. And so it's real important going into it that that buyer is aware of what their potential value is as well as what the real value is at the time that they make the purchase. And other than location, the overall overall condition is real important. The style. Memphis is like a super traditional city. I mean, there are some wonderful homes here that are real contemporary. Certain neighborhoods will handle that, like in Midtown, and go ahead and move forward with the price per square foot not being affected. But even in areas, the suburbs like Germantown and um, Call your vault. If you've got a real contemporary house, it, the, you know, price <coughs> price. Um, the functional age of the house. And what that means is you can come into a house, say in Midtown, and that house may be 100 years old. But it may have been gutted completely, all the way from the wiring, the plumbing. Um, in effect, that house, an appraiser would give that house a functional age of a lot newer than if all that stuff hadn't been done. And you can have that even in a 30-year-old house or uh, even a 10-year-old house as far as some of the amenities. But especially when you get into older heat and air systems, older plumbing, older wiring, you can have a, a frame that's older, but the functional age of the property can be a whole lot newer. The, um, the updates, sorry this pen's not working. Um, the updates to the house, and that, that means things um, such as the heat and air, whether or not the 
bathrooms and kitchen have been updated, the decor, um, just that makes a lot of difference because if somebody's going to move into a house and they're going to have to do all that, they immediately want to know, okay, how much is it going to cost me to replace the heat and air because it's about to poop out, and then they want to add, you know, subtract that from their value. So um, that's important. And also looking down the road at what, um, what, your, what your cash flow is going to be like in the property coming up in the next couple of years. Floor plan. Have you all ever walked into a house and gone, wow, this is great. You know, you just go in the front door, it flows, it's just a great feeling. Have you also walked into some and gone, uh-oh, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is not, this is rough. I mean, there are houses that can have 3,000 square feet, but they don't live like 3,000 square feet. Maybe they live like 4,000 square feet because there's no wasted space. There's no dead spaces. Everything that's there that's available is something that the, the owners would, are going to use pretty much. Um, another thing would be curb appeal. Something I do when I'm out with a brand new buyer is we'll drive through neighborhoods and I'll just say, tell me which of these houses look like home to you. And there's, it, it's a real personal thing. Uh, some people like no trees. I mean, some people see a big tree and they just get really nervous. And other people want, uh, the more trees, the better. That just makes them feel all snug in. Some people like a very square ranch little house and other people, a, a colonial, that's where they grow up, that's what they're happy in. There's that factor, and there's some things that are more appealing to the general market, but there's also whether or not you drive up and the yard's all scraggy looking, or it, it just looks beautiful and then very inviting to go into. Another thing is decor. I had some people last year, I was going out on a listening board, I'd never seen a house before, and they said, all our walls have been resurfaced. We're so excited to show them to you. They're, they're all sparkly new. The wallpaper had been up for 30 years. And to them, they did it new when they moved in, and in their minds, that, that was new. You know, <laughs> it's just new. Um, there are colors, and there are styles, and there are trends that sell really well, and then there are others that are just, nobody Nobody likes the jewel tones anymore. Nobody wants that bright green and that bright uh, pink color like they used to. But for a while, that was, that was really a good selling factor. This is a Whopper. Cleanliness. If, um, if you go into a house and immediately you're hit with this wall of odor, you know, I mean, I have people that just do a UE and they're they're gone. I mean, they won't they won't come in. People have allergies. Um, also, if the house smells really specially good, like chocolate chip cookies or something, then people warm up to the property a whole lot more quickly. And the cleanliness is not just on the surface; it goes way down deep. I had a house listed, gosh, a long time ago. A friend of mine, I won't, I won't name names, and. She just won the clean person. She just didn't clean house very well. And she'd call me when I had an open house on Saturday and say, I have, I've cleaned all day. And I know, I tell her to leave two hours early and I go over there, this, I don't do this her way, and clean the house for her. But, I mean, I mean talking about wiping fingerprints off the storm door and stuff like that, just so it would make a little nice trail through the house. But that, that's a real important thing. Um, in some houses that have been well cared for and they've been kept clean through the years, it just shows and it, you, can just, you can just feel it when you walk in. The yard, whether it's got a nice size, it's got usable space, um, room for a pool, busy street normally knocks 10% off property value. Whether or not the, uh, the house is organized, And that would fit more into the sale portion of it. When buyers walk into a house and it just feels cluttered, some people's minds can handle that, but a lot of people's minds can't. They walk in and they just sort of, their brains get fuzzy when they walk into a mess. Something that's, that I get involved in a lot is whether it's staging on the house, whether or not the house is staged. I had an appraiser at a house yesterday that uh, just to help me with value. It's a 
1,400 square foot house in Germantown, two bedrooms, one bath, and I'm having trouble finding comparables for it. And one of the things the appraiser said to me, she goes, Sandy, are you going to have this house staged? And I said, absolutely. She said, that would give you 5% in value. And um, so all of these factors, some of you can change. You can't change location. You can change condition. Um, the style, you almost can't change. You can't change functional age updates. The floor plan, you can't change. Um, cleanliness yard, organizing stage. So it's real important when you buy to focus on the ones you can't change and know that you're kind of stuck with those. But then as you move forward into your time of living there, uh, there are things you can do to prepare the house for the market. So I appreciate your time today. Sandy Smith, uh, residential realtor with Carlisle. Yes, Very good. questions? Do, uh, do kitchens and baths still hold the best money bang for your buck if you remodel? Absolutely. You can actually get like 80% or more, depending on the other, other features of the house, but they're the top ways to make an improvement and prepare for the market. Uh, putting in a pool, mm -hmm. does it really change the, the value or is it really your, your money doesn't really change it much? Putting in a pool increases technically the value of the property, but let's say it's a $30,000 pool, it may up your value to $10,000. Okay. So it's not a good investment for you as a home seller as far as just simply the cash flow. Plus, there are some people that don't want a pool. So it decreases a little bit your pool of buyers. Right. Anything else? What about um, garages versus not having garages? It's uh, very important, yeah. And I didn't put that on there. That's a good one, Shane. Does the amount of new construction going on in a community impact the value, like the square footage value? It does. If the it, it increases the overall square footage value because it means that the neighborhood's growing and thriving. And that's a great benefit. Sometimes sellers want to say, hey, my house is just as wonderful as those new houses, and I want the same price per square foot, but price per square foot's a good $10, if not more, per square foot on new construction, depending on, depending on the neighborhood. Yeah, it does, it does help the neighborhood for sure. Anything else? Okay. That was a great guys. presentation. Oh.